Welcome to Clifton House, one of the most beautiful National Trust houses in the UK. It's absolutely incredible, built in 1666. And today we're here to see one of the most iconic supercars today on the road. No, it's not the McLaren 675LT. Although that is very nice. But we're not here to film that. We're here to film something even more iconic. The Ferrari 812 Competizione. This is the most exciting Ferrari that I've seen in modern times. It's going to take the recipe of the F12 TDF, but make it even better. So how does this differentiate from the 812 Superfast? Well, it's faster, it's lighter, it's got more downforce, it's louder, it's absolutely incredible. Why don't we start at the front? So you've got these massive scoops that go into cooling the engine. And then on the side of this, you've got the scoops to cool the brakes. Now the brakes on this are actually really special because they've actually got cooling ducts in the actual calipers. That's a first for a Ferrari and I think any car. You've also got this front carbon panel here. Now this was necessary to basically cool the engine so that it had ducts inside this front bonnet. And it actually looks really nice because it breaks up the whole front of the car. If we carry on through here, we've got a duct behind the wheel arch. It just looks, the detail on this is incredible. And obviously this is in carbon fiber. And then you've got these tires now with the Pirelli P0 stripe around them, which I know some people don't like, but I think they look incredible and they match the yellow calipers. This car also has the calipers from the SF90, which were a first for a Ferrari with that cooling technology. The rear of the car is actually even more interesting than the front. For the first time on a production car, there is no rear screen. Now, why have they done this? Well, normally they create downforce by having a flat bottom to the car, but this time they've actually used the rear screen to create more downforce. So you see these strakes here, and also you've got a massive rear diffuser, and they've managed to create this rear diffuser by pushing the exhaust all the way to the outer edge, and the same with this rear tail. This rear tail goes all the way across the car to create even more downforce. Also, you have these little flicks here. If you can see Jay through here, you've got these three little flicks. These are also for aerodynamics as well. And also as a kind of homage to the F12 TDF. But I think we've looked around the car enough now. I think we should take it for a drive and see what it's like. <laughs> So I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time in the F12 and the 812 and we've actually done a comparison video on my channel of the two. And the one thing that you never feel in those cars, either of them, is that you lack power. That V12 is just fantastic. It just pulls in every single gear. 
wonderful, wonderful engine. And the same with this car, just more urgency. Oh my gosh, so exciting to drive. As you would imagine, it's like an 812 on steroids. It's got more noise, it's got more pickup, it's got sharper turn in. Oh, ridiculous for the road though. Ridiculous for the road, so fast. But so exciting, wow. And it looks so good in blue posi. It just feels so special to drive these cars. The F12, the A12. They just have something special over the V8 engine, Ferraris. I love the V8s. I used to have a Challenge Stradale, but there's nothing quite like having a V12 up front. The way it pulls is just mega. I mean, how do Ferrari make this so exciting to drive? Well, they've created a huge amount of downforce, a lot, a lot of clever aerodynamics on this car. And they've reduced the weight, increased the power, and what a recipe, what a recipe. When you're driving an F12, you feel it, the twitchiness of the car. They managed to fix that with the 812. But in my opinion, the 812 actually never felt as exciting as an F12. But this puts the fun back into the 812 for me. This is an exciting car to drive. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I mean, it just feels like you are in a race car on the road. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Naturally aspirated engine pumping out 819 brake horsepower. It just doesn't get better than this. And I've only got it in sport mode because I'm a little bit nervous and I'm driving around country lanes. This is wearing Cup R tires, which need to get really, really warm before they work. Not ideal for a road car, but it makes it more exciting, more challenging. Inside, it really feels very much like an 812 Superfast, no real difference, a little bit more a little bit of carbon on the doors, Alcantara seats, but very similar to an 812. When you're driving the 812 super fast, you never feel like you need more power in that, but they've given it more power, but they've also given it a little bit of an edge that makes it more exciting to drive. Maybe it's just because you know you're in something so sexy and so delicious and so special. Only 999 of these being produced with 599 convertibles and all sold out. What a car. No one could ever accuse a Ferrari 812 Superfast of being boring. It handles well, it's fast, it sounds pretty good, it looks magnificent. However, however, Ferrari have taken it up a notch. It looks much more aggressive than an 812 Superfast. The turn-in is much sharper, it feels much more exciting to drive, it sounds better. What a phenomenal car! Unbelievable, unbelievable how Ferrari have managed to turn the dial up on an 812 Superfast, but they've done it. This is one of the most exciting cars I've ever driven. The only thing I will say is it's still a little bit twitchy 
Uh, that makes it exciting to drive, but not everyone is going to want a car that's a little bit twitchy. I still think cars like this belong on the racetrack because you just can't get even the tires up to proper temperatures to use them on the road. But what a phenomenal car. And hopefully one day I'll be able to take it on the track. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you.